Novavax promises to bring a new type of vaccine um, unique to the two leading vaccines known as the BioNTech and Moderna vaccine. What they're trying to say is that this vaccine could possibly replace Moderna and BioNTech for third world countries, uh, giving the same level of efficacy for third storage conditions. Now, today I'll examine a number of things. Firstly, I'll talk about uh, what are the components of this vaccine, um, and then further on, I will be able to discuss whether we'll be able to deliver on that promise um, and whether it truly is a replacement to Moderna and BioNTech. There are two resource components that are critical to this vaccine. Number one is a moth. What they do is they use the ovaries of a moth to mass produce the spike proteins. In itself, this is a genius method of producing a spike protein, and it's unique. And the second part is the saponin tree, which provides the adjuvant which allows the vaccine to create a high level of stimulation to immune cells causing high neutralizing antibodies. And this is important um, in the way it is made and its effects and even some of its side effects. One of the key components of the Novavax vaccine is the Chilean tree. This tree is a very rare tree um, and that in itself is a problem to upscale it to billions of people. Now from the saponin that they re they actually make this adjuvant. The adjuvant is designed to stimulate the immune response. In Novavax they call it Matrix M. However, this type of saponin has been used before in a vaccine made by GSK called Shingrix. Now, in the initial trials of Shingrix, they didn't see any major side effects. However, once they started to use it in large populations, they found that some of the people over 65 developed a condition known as Gulling Barr syndrome. Now, Gulling Barr syndrome is a very serious condition. The reason being, Gulling Barr syndrome can cause a condition known as chronic fatigue syndrome it lasts for you for the rest of your life and for some people it can take up to six months to learn to walk again after they get this um, sad adverse reaction. On the 24th of March, the FDA released a day warning against the vaccine called Shingrix. What they found, there was an increased propensity for patients to get Gulling Barr syndrome 40 days after the administration of the Shingrix vaccine. Why is this important to um, the Shingrix vaccine? Well, the issue being is that the Shingrix vaccine and Novavax use the same um, adjuvant, which is derived from the saponin. There may be subtle differences. What we can suspect that gulling bar syndrome would also be increased in the Novavax. The real issue about Novavax is that unlike Shingrix, um, Novavax is marketing for all ages and we know that the immune response in younger people is far greater than the elderly where Shingrix was ma marketed to people 50 plus because they are the people who are more likely to get shingles in the later years. So uh, what we don't know yet is how statistically significant it is for Novavax because the, it hasn't actually given all of its uh, information to the FDA, which describes its clinical trial data. And they do mention there are some rare um, adverse reactions that are quite severe, but the details have been left out. What I believe will happen is that when Novavax is scaled out to a larger population, all these severe symptoms will then become apparent. And my concern is that gulling bar syndrome will be one of them. We know that with when Shingrix was first launched, it wasn't actually a known issue. It's only after a couple of years of it being on the market that they've realized that it is, has become an issue. The function of Matrix M is basically to increase the immune response. Basically, if the protein was just to be used on its own, it would take a large amount and it's less likely to activate um, white blood cells and those that have immune functions, in particular, 
is the ones that are called antigen present, uh, presenting cells, which basically enhance the function of D T cells and B cells and increase the antigen presenting cell population. It thus increases the neutralizing antibodies, decreases the amount of protein that's required, and in so facto should uh, basically increase the population of CD4 and CD8 cells, which do lead to long lasting memory B cells. The question is, did it really occur? Um, and is it shown in journal publications? The real issue with the um, promise of the matrix M was to get both CD4 and CD8 cells, but when it came to clinical data, it only showed that the CD4 cells were stimulating. However, in the Pfizer-BioNTech, they clearly showed in their clinical trial both CD8 and CD4s were stimulated. As a result of that, we can actually see by the South African trials, Novavax didn't perform anything near as well as BioNTech did uh, in real-time data. Uh, Novavax had a uh, efficacy rating of 60% in patients which didn't have HIV, and it reduced down to 40% in patients which did have HIV in comparison to BioNTech, which had 100% efficacy. There's no data being released yet from Moderna, but I expect it would be between 80 and 100% seeing they use the same platform, but that information isn't widely available. In terms of the efficacy of Novavax, you can see it's quite inadequate to deal with the South African strain. In fact, the only vaccine that I would recommend for South Africa would have to be the BioNTech vaccine. Um, it has issues also in the sense that the data is not complete. Um, so there's no real data that covers HIV patients per se in any other country. Um, however, I would say it's very close to be on par on J&J's vaccine. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine has one big advantage over Novavax, though. And it's the fact that it only is a one injection to give the same level of efficacy. So I know a lot of people are believing that um, Novavax will be the ideal booster. Uh, for poor countries, but I would say J&J &J would be more befitting for that position in the fact that it A, has the same level of efficacy and B, um, is only one dose only. So uh, when you have limited resources, it's probably a better choice um, in an area where perhaps it'd be difficult to give them more than one dose. Now, in terms of efficacy uh, compared to BioNTech, BioNTech is a clear winner when it comes to how effective it is. Also, the data is more complete. I mean, they've even gone as far as looked at the New Indian variant. Um, so in terms of the science, um, I think a doctor or a pharmacist or any clinician would be more confident to give the BioNTech vaccine uh, as opposed to the Nova vaccine. But in terms of um, how effective it is, I would say it is very close to as uh, Johnson & Johnson and somewhat superior to AstraZeneca. In terms of logistics and supply, well, recently India has announced that they are keen on taking on Novavax. Now, that sounds great because India is one of the biggest manufacturers of vaccine in the world. However, there are some problems with this. Number one, they have failed to be able to provide sufficient vaccine for their own population when they were trying to prevent, do their homegrown vaccine and the AstraZeneca vaccine. They largely blamed the United States for um, limiting the supply of raw materials. Now, the problem, again, with, uh, I would say, with uh, Novavax is a limitation of resources. In fact, they've actually noted supply issues on the 25th of March to the EU and they basically said we couldn't meet the supply requirements for the EU. And that was not just because of manufacturing capability, it was more to do with raw materials. So in reaction to this, Joe Biden has actually um, removed Novavax from the Defence Production Act to allow more supplies to go towards India. Having said that, I would say there are a lot of overlapping ingredients for the AstraZeneca vaccine and the homegrown vaccine in India. 
So I still believe that there will be a problem with logistics and for them to be capable of meeting the supply demand for India and other third world nations. Um, I don't think this is a case for Pfizer, which has multiple nodes throughout the world and they keep building and buying more factories between uh, BioNTech and Pfizer. So in, the, in terms of logistics and supply, just can't see them matching um, uh, BioNTech. But in a longer time frame, maybe they'll be able to do it. I see them maybe being a um, an option for third world countries later on. But in the next one or two years, I just can't see them being a company that would be able to supply the world uh, in the scale that it needs to be like 7 billion doses or so. So that's a big issue for this company. Um, they've already disappointed the EU with their inability to supply. So hopefully they can concede in India because they've definitely failed in the United States and the other areas where they've tried to uh, produce the vaccine on scale. People haven't underestimated the uh, COVID uh, virus initially, except for perhaps one company, BioNTech, which initially looked at uh, the possibility of mutations in the initial design. Unfortunately for Novavax, uh, they obviously didn't take it into account to the same degree as what BioNTech did. And as a result of that, you can see some waning uh, results between different variants already. The other problem is, is that this uh, method of development is a multi-step process. So even if they were to collect every variant that um, is currently available and then adapt it to, to um, a new um, form uh, of an Novavax, you would find that their lag time would be so slow that you they would probably have had multiple um, upgrades to the mRNA platforms. Uh, the main issue for Novavax is speed. Um, and it's very hard for a company to be addressing multiple facets all at once. Uh, for example, if they're already having production problems and then they find that they're having upgrade problems, that creates uh, a lot of issues for Novavax. So I think they're in a very difficult position. I think they've given it a good shot, but I don't believe that they will be looked at as a booster vaccine. However, I think in third world countries, especially in India, it might be the vaccine of choice for a, a bulk uh, group of people. And at the very least, it would, should uh, prevent hospitalization. But I don't see it as a vaccine that would be widely used in Western countries. Um, we can see in Australia at the moment, um, there is a big backlash about using AstraZeneca because of adverse reactions. And there's another issue in regards to its efficacy against variants, in particular, the South African variant. So we'll wait and see what Novavax can do, but I think they have a lot more problems to deal with than, say, Moderna or BioNTech. But um, you never know. They could send us a big surprise, but they need a lot of luck, I think, in their quest.